1,300 light years from Earth, something bizarre is happening. This star is very mysterious because it has uh, these very strange fluctuations in its light. Powerful telescopes are peering at it because something huge is passing in front of it. It's definitely something very big that's getting in the way. Astronomers are bending their brains trying to explain it. Some are even considering the possibility that an alien megastructure is blocking its light. It would be a big deal in so many different ways. You know, it's something for, you know, you to sit back and ask yourself like the same question, like, you know, what if we knew that we were not alone? Astronomer Tabitha Boyajin led the investigation of this strange star, so scientists named it after her. The story of Tabby Star begins on the web. Tabby was assisting a crowdsourcing project where people sift through data from the Kepler Space Telescope to help find planets orbiting distant stars. Kepler was designed to measure a star's brightness over time and see how that changed. And when a planet goes in front of the star, and this is what we call a transit, this one star had a truly unique light curve that no one had really seen before, and it, and it sparked a lot of discussion. There are several occasions where the brightness dips down quite a significant amount. Tabby and her colleagues dug into the data. If a planet was orbiting this star, the dips would happen at regular intervals. These dimming events were, um, were very sporadic. Just as weird, whatever was blocking the light was huge. Most of the planets that Kepler has discovered block about 1% of the light. But these deep jags suggest a cluster of large objects is blocking up to 22% of the light. One of the things we considered was the stars had some sort of debris disk around it that was still growing planets. Astronomers have seen that before, but those disks glow with heat. There's no evidence of that here. Another scenario we had was a transiting ring system, so a planet with these huge rings, just like Saturn has. But we were able to rule this out because the data we have isn't what we expect to see from this kind of transiting system. They investigated whether giant comets could be blocking the light, but found no evidence comets can grow that big. The other thing that we have observed in this star, which is completely unique, we've seen, never seen any other star to do, is that over the entire duration of the Kepler missions, so over the four years, it decreased in its overall brightness by a total of 3%. Tabby's team ruled out every natural explanation they could think of, so one colleague suggested something unnatural. The idea is you have some sort of civilization that is in need of a larger energy source. They've run out of all their energy on their home planet. And so they go off to build these ginormous solar panels. And so whatever is blocking the light from this star in this scenario would be these ginormous solar panels that are orbiting the star. Soon, scientists around the world were abuzz, putting forward explanations for the star's strange behavior. Brian Metzger of Columbia University thinks Mother Nature trumps E.T. So in the beginning, we proposed maybe 100 or 1,000 years ago, Tabby Star had a companion planet, and that planet had a moon orbiting around it. As the planet moved closer and closer to Tabby Star, eventually it got so close that the star stole the moon from the planet, and the moon began orbiting Tabby Star. That moon, feeling the strong tidal forces of the star and its intense radiation, began to heat up and started outgassing material, producing a dust cloud around it. Meanwhile, the planet itself continued to move closer and closer in to Tabby Star, until it got so close that it actually impacted the surface and began to spiral into its interior. This released an enormous amount of energy, which caused Tabby Star to very rapidly brighten and then slowly fade over the ensuing decades and centuries. So today, it's still dimming. And furthermore, the moon, which was detached from the original planet, is still orbiting Tabby Star, still producing a dust cloud around it. And every time it passes in front of our line of sight, it causes a dimming of the star by up to 20%. So we can understand both the slow dimming as well as the erratic dips in Tabby Star without the need to invoke aliens. 
I like this theory because it um, worked out some of the physics, especially due to the observations showing the stars uh, long-term dimmy, and so it uh, directly addressed that in a plausible way. Here's an idea from a German scientist who's not shy about invoking aliens. Edward Heindel suggests that aliens might be mining the star, using magnetic fields to lift particles from its surface, channeling them through huge magnetic coils, separating the metal from hydrogen and helium. The metals cool in a cloud that orbits the sun to be harvested later. According to him, it's this cloud that could be blocking the light. We will be able to test this idea if this cloud will again reappear in a periodic manner. Then we'll be able to rule this out or support this theory. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. Tabby and her colleagues are hungry for more data. They're watching with a network of telescopes for the star to dim again. And when something changes, we can trigger more observations bigger telescopes, higher resolution, and so we can study the kind of material passing in front of the star. They're also listening. We're looking for uh, signs of technology around this star, so kind of leak communication of sorts. They're using the Green Bank Telescope, the largest steerable radio telescope in the world. So far, they haven't heard anything that sounds like ET. This star, you know, started out for me as a, an annoyance because it wasn't something that had a ready solution. I look back on it and, you know, I think it's silly of me to just to ha be thinking that way because that's not why I do science. This is a fun thing and it's a mystery.